Well, I'm going to try something I haven't done for 20 years. I'll see if I don't blow myself up in doing it. I'm going to burn a little bit of alcohol and gasoline to show you a little bit about the difference really directly. You know, in a, a few years ago, 15 years ago, you couldn't do what I'm doing here with gasoline, which is put it in a bowl and then light it. If you put it in a bowl and stood back 10 feet and lit a match, that would go off because we had much more volatile gasoline 15 or 20 years ago. So that's gasoline and that's alcohol. Now there's 5% gasoline in the alcohol. That's why you can see a yellow flame at all. The reason why the gasoline is in there is because uh, by law you have to poison the alcohol so it's not drinkable. And the gasoline looks like it already burned up. Well, I didn't put much in, but you can, you can already see the carbon that's coating the inside of this, because I only put a very tiny amount of gasoline in there. So I can hand it around if you want to look at it. Now the alcohol is not causing any carbon, even with the 5% gasoline, but the difference between the gasoline and the alcohol is I can put it out with water. Alcohol goes out with water, and so that's why one of the reasons why they use it in races is if you have a car turn over and explode on the track, you can get out there with the water and put it right out. And a lot of you intuitively know this because when you go to a bar, you see people drinking alcohol and they're smoking. Well, not in California. <laughs> and nothing explodes. So when alcohol gets below 100 proof or 50%, it cannot light on fire, much less explode. The, the flash point, the explosion point of gasoline is 45 degrees below zero. So if you've got 50 degrees below zero and you light a match in a room full of gasoline vapor, it won't blow up. But if it's over 45 degrees below zero, like 30 degrees below zero, no more room, okay? With alcohol, alcohol's flash point is close to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, room temperature, you know, and, and that's only pure alcohol, and alcohol has different characteristics in its vapor spread, so you have to really work to get that to explode. Um, gasoline, it'll leave a container, it'll creep along the floor till it finds a pilot light, and will light and explode all the way back. Alcohol is lighter than air when it uh, evaporates, so you have to fill the whole room to the right fuel-air mixture to get an explosion. It's really safe compared to gasoline. Um, I'm going to do something else here which is kind of fun. This is uh, an ingenious, you know, just when I thought I knew everything there was to know about alcohol, these, uh, these kids in Berkeley sat down with some epoxy and soda cans and made an alcohol stove that works really well. I just thought this was so ingenious. So I'll just get that going while we're talking. We'll put a little pot of tea on. But um, what ether works really well. Ether is an anesthetic and it's a legal denaturant. This denaturing stuff, denaturing means making it poisonous so you can't um, drink it, is a requirement of the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms people. So a lot of folks say, is it legal to make alcohol? Because the revenuers, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, will come out and bust you because you could be making liquor. So I got to tell you a quick story about this, which is, has to do with you know, our power as citizens. Um, Lance Crombie was this interesting farmer up there in Minnesota, and he started making alcohol with a little tiny still, and the ATF came in and busted him and took his still away and said, nobody can make alcohol. Now you got to realize, back in the 80s, you couldn't even make beer and wine legally. There were no microbrews, none of that existed yet. You couldn't even make your own beer or wine. The government bureaucracy was so rabid about the subject. Well, we took Lance's story, and I made a still, so did several other people, and we wrote about it in a couple of magazines because we found out that there was an experimental permit down at the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms that the big distilleries would fill out when they didn't want to do the whole 250 page permit just to do something experimental. So we said, there's an experimental permit. We, are, we can all apply for it. There's no reason why we can't. So we went ahead and applied for it and built a still and we said, come and get us. And they said, we can't. The permit's legal. So we told everybody, but, but we want you to go through this extensive procedure and get a bond and you know this and that. And we said, we're not going to do it. And so we wrote about this and 250,000 people also applied for the permit. Wow, 250,000? 250, 250,000 people applied for the permit. 
which brought the bureaucracy of the ATF to a grinding halt. And they realized that if they were going to have any idea who was making alcohol, they were going to have to make it free and easy or nobody would fill out the permit. So they made it a one-page permit. Cost, I think it's still free. And you can make 10,000 gallons of fuel a year. But of course, you're supposed to put something in it to poison it, you know, so that you can't drink it. And I'm sure you'll all do that if you make your own alcohol. We can trust you to do that. Now, <sighs> car stuff. 